Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. How are you guys doing today? It's a beautiful day out here. And let's start over in Hawaii where we see just 12 earthquakes in a 24 hour period. 274 earthquakes listed in the last 24 hours, which is really, really quiet. So this is very, very interesting. Um, you know, again, Hawaii is, is changing. It's definitely, there's changes going on. It's slowing down, apparently. Keep your eyes open. Uh, if we take a quick look at the Ring of Fire, um, it's, it, there's really not any major activity going on at the moment. 5.1 in Fiji just happened. 5.6 over in Guatemala. 4.3 over in Costa Rica. Um, you know, there's some activity in the South Atlantic as we were looking at that 5.6 yesterday, a 5.2 has joined it. And, you know, we have three over here uh, in Chile, 4.3, 4.0, Typical in the um, Caribbean plate. And then we see some down through Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Probably all fracking related. And so, you know, honestly, relatively quiet right now. Relatively quiet. Ongoing volcanic activity, though, creates sinkholes and cracks throughout Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. So there's still sinkholes happening. There's still some uh, movement. The seismicity has just dramatically decreased. I mean, recognize that there was 18,000 seismic events in 30 days. That's huge. Now we have 12 and 24 hours. So obviously, dramatic, dramatic change going on. The summit crater Halema Uma'u has more than quadrupled in size as magma drains out. The new dimensions are staggering to those familiar with it. Once 280 feet deep, it's now more than 1,500 feet deep in places. Its volume has increased to 800 million cubic meters, an amount equivalent to 300,000 Olympic uh, size swimming pools. Without lava pressure supporting the summit, large and sudden collapses reshape Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park. More than 60 large collapse explosion events have occurred since the park closed on May 11th. So huge, huge changes going on still happening as you can see uh, just a, a different phase right now and so we'll see what this develops into and you know perhaps the event is pretty much over will it manifest as a new event will it manifest in different areas uh, only time will tell that's, that's honestly the truth so yesterday we were talking about 750 people evacuated from the flooding over in France, and now it's up to 1,600. Uh, so it's increased uh, dramatically in that same basic area. Uh, there's some videos, and I, <laughs> I think we've all seen tons of flooding videos in the last uh, four months or so. Think about that, really. Here we are on August 10th. And really, it, it seems like, I think it was pretty much like the end of March when all this started to really just kick up so intensely, and it's been nonstop, nonstop. So we have new rifts and cracks and sinkholes opening up around Tungna Feljoku. I hope that wasn't too horribly done. Volcano in Iceland. And this one has not had any recorded historical activity, but it's considered an active volcano that has erupted sometime during the past 10,000 years, mainly from flank fissures on the northeast side where young basaltic lava flows occur. However, researchers have recently found new cracks and sinkholes, craters, on their way to Geisavatn, I guess you would say. Are these traces of recent explosions? Is this something to come? As you see some of the sinkholes. So is this just another area that's getting active as a new phase will come? Not sure if I would do that if I was them. 
not sure I'd jump right in the middle of what could end up being a huge rift. I mean, how many times have we seen rifts open up that are like 150 feet deep? Um, yeah, yeah, it's just, I'm not sure about that. And uh, this is just speaking about a glacial outburst from Vatna Jokul, largest on record. No serious damage to the infrastructure, thank thankfully, but it is the largest on record. And then staggering death toll for firefighters in California's summer of flames. Well, second summer of flames in a row, but this summer is building up to be even more significant than last. And, um, you know, we have to thank these guys for what they're doing, and they're, they're fighting what appears to be just a, uh, 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 it's going to be a long, long battle this year. A long battle. It's, it's a marathon, and it's definitely tough on firefighters and their families. And so let's, you know, give them thanks and send them our best wishes and prayers. Uh, as, as this year is setting up to be unprecedented, <coughs> a word that we have used often. Excessive heat and rain is affecting the crop seasons in New York. Waves of torrential rain and withering heat this summer has made growing and harvesting food more unpredictable for farmers in New York and all over the world, really. The weather has been just horrible to deal with, said Craig DeVoe of DeVoe's Rainbow Orchards and Half Moon. You don't know when a curveball is going to get thrown at you. A cold and snowy April put growers behind in their planning schedules, which is why some crops may not be ready now. Hot temperatures in July put stress on plants, affected the pollen of fruits and veggies, caused some of the products to crack or be misshapen. We're seeing more extremes all the time in our weather. And so we don't have an average year anymore. And that's everybody. <clears throat> that's a global thing. Extremes is the norm now. In Brunswick, <clears throat> Ed Engel should be harvesting his tomatoes by now, but they're not ripe and blight has ravaged many of the plants. It used to be that Ed could fill dozens of baskets with tomatoes quickly, but now it takes several hours just to fill 12. His sweet corn has been affected too. And while he ordinarily would be cutting cabbage this time of year, that's not ready either. It's just a strange year, said Ed. Nothing is right. And, and that is not just New York. We, we know it's everywhere. And so, there's so much going on otherwise too and uh, a ton of stuff that feels very very significant and a lot of uh, little leaks that they always like to throw out there at us hacked satellites satellite systems could launch microwave like attacks really expert warns at black hat conference in las vegas researcher said, researcher says theoretical threat to ships planes and military is no longer theoretical you know what hackers can launch microwave attacks from our satellites the satellite communications that ships plants and the military use to connect to the internet are vulnerable to hackers that in a worst case scenario could carry out cyber physical attacks turning satellite antennas into weapons that operate essentially like microwave ovens. Really? Isn't this interesting timing that this comes out now? According to research presented at Black Hat Information Security Conference in Las Vegas, a number of popular satellite communication systems are vulnerable to the attacks, which could also leak information and hack connected devices. The attacks, which are merely a nuisance for the aviation sector, could pose a safety risk for military and maritime users. Ruben Santamarta, a researcher for the information security film IOA Active, <clears throat> interesting, uh, carried out this study building on research he presented in 2014. You know, looking at all these things, what do you guys see from I IOA? Are you guys familiar with Gnosticism? Are you familiar with the Demiurge? He, well, you know, it's just a, a misjumble. But anyway, I just see all these like little signs. There's so many signs, so many signals, so many subliminal messages. So, you know, here they're talking about 
how somebody could quote unquote hack a satellite and use it as a weapon, as a microwave weapon. Interesting, you know, to direct the energy as a weapon, directed energy weapon. Interesting timing, very interesting timing. You know, things that make you say, hmm, China fi fires six warnings to US Navy in South China Sea. This is China, leave immediately. The Chinese military told a, a US Navy plane flying over the highly disputed island in the South China Sea to leave immediately. The U.S. Navy PA-8 Poseidon jet was flying at 16,500 feet to get a view of low-lying coral reefs that had been turned into garrisons with five-story buildings, large radar installations, power plants, and runways sturdy enough to carry large military aircraft. During the flight that was giving journalists from CNN a rare look at the islands, the crew was warned six times by the Chinese military to get out of their territory. A voice said, U.S. military aircraft, this is China, leave immediately and keep out to avoid any misunderstanding. Each time the aircraft was challenged by the Chinese military, the U.S. Navy crew's response was the same. The response was, I am a sovereign, immune United States naval aircraft conducting lawful military activities beyond the national airspace of any coastal state. And exercising these rights, as guaranteed by international law, I am operating with due regard for the rights and duties of all states. CNN was granted the chance to see how the Chinese government is rapidly expanding its militarization efforts from a U.S. Re reconnaissance plane when the harsh threat was issued. The U.S. Navy jet had flown over four key artificial islands in the Spratly chain where China has built up fortifications, Subi Reef, Fiery Cross Reef, Johnson Reef, and Mischief Reef. And so, you know, this is quoting CNN, this is this article, it's not me endorsing CNN. Uh, I always find it funny when people just hear certain words or sounds or, you know, acronyms and then they say, what, you're endorsing CNN? Uh, oh, now I can't take you seriously. No, I'm quoting the, argue, the, the article. I'm not endorsing CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, or anything. Uh, all the mainstream has an agenda. Every, everything mainstream has an agenda. Whether it be your news sources, your, your political parties, your religious organizations, they all have agendas. And, um, you know, the deeper I go down the rabbit hole, I mean, of course, do not trust anybody. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust me. Don't trust any YouTuber as well. Because, you know, some of them at, time from, at, at times feel like they're getting, we all get pressure for sure. I mean, we see our videos, you know, get marked um, and labeled certain ways and we feel the pressure. Um, and, you know, that's why there's, there's so many new alternative outlets popping up everywhere as well. Uh, but obviously the mainstream is not to be trusted. Anything mainstream is not to be trusted. And the, the main thing is to do your own discernment and think for yourselves. And everybody should be encouraged to truly think for themselves. And I think I'm always encouraging people to think for yourselves. As, as Buddha had said, don't trust anything that even your parents tell you. Because they might be brainwashed in the first place uh, or indoctrinated. So don't trust anybody. Don't trust your parents. Don't trust the schools. Don't trust your teachers. Don't trust the politicians. Most of all, don't trust the media. You must listen to the inner voice within. And, and that's the thing that you can, can trust. But it takes going within to do that and not being afraid of going within uh, to really find discernment. But, um, you know, this is interesting. So I always look at everything with completely a grain of salt and view this as, okay, are they just trying to build up the thought of World War III again? You know, are they trying to create fear? Because realize there are entities out there that fear, fear is fuel for. And so there are beings on all different levels, all different dimensions of being uh, that feed off of energy. Everything is energy. Energy can't be created or destroyed, it just changes form. And energy is the true exchange uh, unit in the universe. That is the real currency, is energy, is life force. 
and realize that there are entities, negative, what we would view as negative entities, that feed off of human suffering. They feed off of fear, they feed off of pain, they feed off of anger, they feed off of hatred. And that's why they cultivate it. And that's why they try to condition us to feel those things. Because it's just like the Matrix. Do you remember the scene in the Matrix where they um, discover and Neo discovers? All these people, all these bodies are plugged into the Matrix and the machines are using the human body as an energy source. And so that is the reality of it. We are food for other beings energetically. They feed off of our suffering, they feed off of our energy. And so when we hold light and we don't hold fear, we go out of the zone where these beings can feed anymore. So we effectively become useless to them. So they don't want us being in a, a loving mode because that takes their food source away from them. And that also ultimately takes their control away from them. And that gives us the control back and gives us our own sovereignty back. So when I look at this, I think, yeah, they are definitely sowing the seeds of fear. And also the fact that we collectively are creating our reality every day in every way. So they are trying to guide our reality by feeding us these things. So we start to expect World War III. We start to expect more and more calamities, and we see the calamities. And so, as we see them, we expect more, and thus we help to actually manifest more. And so, it becomes this endless circle of manifestation. So, like many of you have said for me to, to not, uh, you know, focus so much on the dark side, and I really don't want to. I want to focus all on the light, but the fact is that you know people don't watch that. You know, when I do a qigong video, it gets a thousand views, if that. I mean, some of them only have like hundreds of views still, and yet we are we're approaching five million views on this channel, and uh, we're at a million views a month now or more, and yet it's still this type of stuff that draws people in because this is the way we've been conditioned, and so. We must, we must break ourselves out of this mold and we must realize that we are being conditioned on purpose. And so, look at these things, but don't get caught up in them and don't allow the fear to build. And you know, yes, that is tricky. Uh, it is definitely a tricky thing, especially when we see all these type of things. And this is out of live science, which is you know, a pretty good site. And China just, just tested a hypersonic weapon that could launch nukes at six times the speed of sound, which that's pretty um, pretty ominous as well. And uh, it would definitely give them a very very uh, quick strike ability. And so you know, there's so much that's been hinted at here. As always, I'll have all the links for you guys too. But what we must must do is very much in line with the Buddhist principle principles of cultivating compassion for others, uh, compassion for self, but kind of have a detachment. We must be able to detach ourselves from feeling fear so that you feel that chemical, you don't want to feel that chemical reaction in the body where that fight or flight kicks in because that's going to basically have negative health impact on you. So be aware, notice, you know, don't be caught in the dark, be aware for sure. And, and do your due diligence and your preparation as best as you can. And, and really love each other every single day as much as possible. Focusing on gratitude for all the blessings you have. Like so, you know, last night when I was just sitting there at the end of the day and thinking, oh my God, I feel so blessed. There's so many amazing people that I have met recently that I just absolutely love and adore. Um, so many people that are truly family now we might not be related by blood but my god you know we're we're related by energy and by compassion by love by the same sort of energy that ties us together and uh, these people i absolutely love and adore and, and i feel so blessed to have met and there's so many of you out there so i was just feeling so amazingly grateful and also realizing it's becoming so clear to me that we truly, truly live in a matrix. And uh, ultimately, 
it's, it's hard for you guys to believe it, many of you out there, but in so many ways this is all illusion. It's all smoke and mirrors, and the powers that be know this. And so their ability to skill, skillfully manipulate us is decreasing every day as we awaken. I worked on a uh, family member last night energetically, and this is the, I, I think it was only the second time I've worked on her, but she has been doing Qigong on a regular basis. And uh, she is changing at such a rapid rate, getting so strong, so awake, so aware. Um, she's going to be a magnificent healer, and you know, I am going to train her. And, and she has just so much potential, as, as does one other person that um, I've worked on twice that I will be seeing shortly. Um, tremendous potential to be an incredible healer as well, and as well as one other person I'll be seeing shortly that I only worked on once. Um, but again, I mean, see, there's so much that has been latent in us that the cosmic rays are initiating positive change in us. So let's not fear the cosmic rays, let's be cautious, of course. And as we've talked about, the magnetosphere is declining, and we know that. And this is a period of change, but in these periods, yes, yes, there are mass extinction events. We see that. We see, you know, the red tide killing so many uh, creatures in the sea. We see the green algae bloom up in the, the Black Sea, you know, doing the same thing. Uh, we, we see Fukushima, you know, doing its horrible damage and still going on. You know, that hasn't stopped. There's so much going on. There's so much uh, life that is leaving the planet right now. But what's going to emerge is an all-new planet uh, and a whole new set of life that's going to come out as the planet gets cleansed and purged. And also, you know, the whole way of living that has been out of balance. This is one of the, well... There's been many different societies on this planet, you know, and that you we could see the evidence of these different, um, these different civilizations that have lived on the planet and apparently in high technology, but you know, they definitely seemed to have been more in balance and harmony with the planet than we are. Um, but the new world that will come out. It's going to be one that's in better balance and harmony with the planet and especially with each other. You know, we won't have the manipulation that we see going on now. It won't, it won't be able to happen because we're going to see right through it. Because the energy is making things happen at a faster pace. We could see things. The, that study, that, and I'll, I'll pull it up again. The CIA study uh, that was declassified that showed that as cosmic rays increase, our psychic abilities increase. You know, others have talked about that as well, and that's a fact. I see that with people. I've seen that on, on just working on average people energetically the last five years. You know, people, uh, people on the whole didn't feel things like they do now. People are way more psychically in tune now. Just anybody is. We all are. That 97% junk DNA, quote-unquote, do you know why they call it junk? It's because they don't want you really learning the truth about it. Because it's not junk. It's the key to higher dimensional uh, perception. And it hasn't, it, it's not that it's even latent or dormant. It's been turned off on purpose. And that's part of what's kept us into this lower level matrix of fear. And uh, fear and just lower vibrations. And so that is all changing, and that's not going to be able to keep us uh, under its power anymore as, as it's getting reassembled from the cosmic rays coming in. So the Turkish lira plunges 20% versus the dollar after Trump authorizes doubling metal tariffs on Turkey. So Turkish lira added to its steep losses on Friday, hitting a fresh record low after President Donald Trump authorized the doubling of metal tariffs on Turkey. The lira traded down 20% against the U.S. dollar at 6.797 after Trump made the comment and this comment in a tweet. I have just authorized a doubling of tariffs on steel and aluminum with respect to Turkey as their currency, and the Turkish lira slides rapidly downward against our very strong dollar. Aluminum will now be 20%, steel 50%. Our relations with Turkey are not so good at this time. 
Trump's tweet came after President um, Erdogan asked citizens to convert their dollars and other foreign currencies as well as gold holdings to local lira. So they are definitely, um, they're getting, they're getting it. I think, well, they're not, they're, they're not going to be as easily manipulated as say Venezuela. Um, but yeah, the squeeze is on with Turkey right now. And as this says, Ergenon said Turkey is facing an economic war and noted the country would respond to those countries who had started it. We are facing economic attacks today and we need to defend our country, Ergenon said. According to the translation, the economic attack against us now is the same as a coup attempt against us. I'm urging our country to increase outputs to increase exports. Turkish stocks fell on Friday and it goes on you know, into all that. And this, this is very interesting to see what's going on here. And this is more on the, the Turkish Lira crash and how it's going to new lows as the market alarm goes on. And um, doubts over the central bank, accelerated speed, you know, concerns are intensifying right now. Very, very interesting stuff to watch. And actually we want to go over Let's move this out of the way. Sorry, guys. Let's keep going with this type of thought here. U.S. oil reserves release will not guarantee lower pump prices. Uh, American drivers are unlikely to see prices at the pump fall if the Trump administration releases crude from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve because U.S. oil production already is sky high. Uh, and thanks to fracking. A potential release ahead of the U.S. midterm elections in November would aim to bring relief to customers who have seen gasoline jump 50 cents a gallon in the past year. Even if the release temporarily sends futures contracts lower, there is no guarantee pump prices would follow and remain down. According to analysts and market participants, it's unlikely to have any measurable impact on diesel or gasoline market in the U.S. There's already enough crude to run at max rates. The reserve, which contains about 660 million barrels of crude, can be tapped in the event of an emergency disruption to domestic supply and has been used to avoid price spikes in case of past disruption. And um, I watch all these things with a lot of suspicion. I mean, obviously they want to affect the uh, election results. And even as we have talked about the shadow government and everything really running things, you know, the ones that are below and, and don't really control much, they still always want to be the center of attention. So, you know, there's still always factions within the shadow government um, that are always vying to be top dog. It's just kind of natural. Trump trashes NFL players for anthem protests. Most are unable to define what they are protesting. And this is definitely part of our, we could feel it, we could see it, it's so palpable, the attack on free speech. It's just everywhere we look right now. And so, you know, while everybody has been worried about them taking your guns away, quote unquote, they're taking your voice away. And that's, that's the, that's even more scary in so many ways. Chinese woman pregnant with twins at age of 67 defies doctor's advice to have an abortion. The Beijing couple sought IVF treatment after their only son died in a, ro in a road crash, but medical staff feared the pregnancy would be too, ricky, too uh, risky. Can you imagine that? 67 years old and being pregnant with twins? Wow. I mean, when the kids are like 10 years old, they're going to be like 77, 78 years old. Oh my God, I can't imagine that. I, I just can't imagine that. Unless they're extremely rich and they, they have you know the ability to hire a nanny and all that. But still, you know, I mean, can you see uh, where technology is going? It's, it's pretty amazing. And, and of course we know there's so much secret technology that can go far past that. And so, over here, NASA has spotted a vast glowing hydrogen wall at the edge of our solar system. The sun moves through the galaxy encased in a bubble formed by its own solar wind. In, the front, of, in front of the sun, galactic debris builds up, including hydrogen. 
Sci scientists think there's a hydrogen wall at the edge of the solar system, and NASA scientists think their New Horizons spacecraft can see it. That hydrogen wall is the outer boundary of the home system, the place where our sun's bubble of solar wind ends, and where a mass of interstellar matter too small to bust through that wind builds up, pressing inward. Our host star's powerful jets of matter and energy flow outward for a long stretch after leaving the sun, far beyond the orbit of Pluto, but at a certain point they peter out, and their ability to push back the bits of dust and other matter, the thin, mysterious stuff floating within our galaxy walls, wanes. A visible boundary forms. On one side are the last vestiges of solar wind, and on the other side, in the direction of the sun's movement through the galaxy, there's a buildup of interstellar matter, including hydrogen. And now NASA researchers are pretty sure that New Horizons, the probe that famously skimmed past Pluto in 2015, can see that boundary. So, of course, flat earthers would say, oh, no, man, you got to, you know, check this out. There, there's no, none of this is, is, is real. It's all an illusion. I'm sure the flat earthers will enjoy this article. And now going over here, this, this article, we are throwaways. Uh, it, there is such a homeless epidemic going on in this country. You know, at this moment, there are so many of our evolutionary energy arts family that are basically homeless. Um, you know, dozens of you that I've talked to um, that are, you know, either living out of your cars, um, encamped in state parks, um, you know, are, are just, you know, basically hitchhiking on the road, going from one place to another. And, uh, you know, part of what I would have so much love to, to do is to, to have a place where everybody could go and um, work together and, and be together. So this article is, is all about Laura and John Caston, a homeless couple forced from an Orange County riverbed into temporary motel living. The road had looms empty, filled with hunger, loneliness, and drugs as people try to escape their reality. And, um, you know, it, it's a very sad article. I won't go into it all. I mean, but the thing to, to take from this is that it could hit anybody. You know, this could truly hit anybody. Um, because, you know, this is Laura. And this is a picture of them together. You know, you might be surprised. You really might be surprised who some of these people are that are, are going through this. Um, because John here, intelligent and quick-witted, quick held advanced degrees in clinical psychology. And his work in information technology allowed the Castens to travel to almost 50, all 50 states. At his peak, he earned $150,000 a year. And the couple lived in a stately two-story house with six bedrooms in Port Murray, New Jersey, on a half-acre property. They had a Corvette in the garage and an outdoor shed for a tractor. Think about that. And they're homeless. It could hit anybody. <clears throat> it could hit anybody. And, you know, the, the tent cities that exist, especially out there in California, are just incredible. And so they were forced up and out of that, which, believe it or not, they were actually happy. <laughs> in, in some ways, they were actually happy being there with other people that they considered to be uh, family. And then they were, you know, forced to move out of that zone. And so, you know, it's just one of those tragedies that we're seeing across the nation as, you know, they were upper middle class, uh, you know, to say the least, and now homeless. You know, so there is so much that needs to be fixed, uh, so much. Ancient Mayan discovery, 7,000-year-old skeleton unearthed in Mexican cave. And what do you notice about that skull? What do you notice about that skull? So this is one of the skulls recovered. You know, uh, it, it doesn't take too much deep um, diving and going through to, to realize that, you know, there have been so many experiments on this planet, experiments with humans. The experiments are ongoing as well. And there's been many different forms of humanoid life on this planet, as we can see. And they tell us, well, you know, it was done because they thought it was beautiful to go ahead and put boards on a head and, you know, deform the skull. 
And why? Why did they do that? Well, because you know they viewed the gods as having skulls that were shaped like this, and they wanted to be like the gods. Okay, well, who are the gods? Well, the gods were obviously humanoids that were walking around that they could actually see. And so, you know, whether this is a different form of human, or you know, whether this was emulation of the gods, quote unquote. There's so much evidence out there. Do you know how many skulls we've uncovered that are even more elongated than this? I mean, it, it's just mind-boggling. Do you know how many giant bodies have been found by the Smithsonian or, or sent to the Smithsonian and then sent to a watery grave in the Atlantic? It's really obvious what's what's going on if you just investigate a little bit. And um, we've been watched forever. We've been manipulated forever. We're being watched right now. All the traditions around the world speak of the watchers. Every single one of them talks about those from the sky, you know, that are watching us. And, uh, you know, just think about the Greek gods up there watching us in the clouds. It's always the same story, you know, always. And so the manipulation goes on, the truth is buried. As you can see, a more normal, typical Homo sapiens sapiens skull. And so all these links will be there for you guys as well. Eight powerful ancient practices for supercharging and healing your throat chakra. And there's so many different ways you could do this. So position along the spinal axis from the tailbone to the crown of the head, the seven main energy centers of the body are called chakras. And there's literally hundreds of chakras in the body. There are chakras on the tips of your fingertips. There are chakras at every joint. There are chakras for every organ. There are chakras in your palms. There are chakras in your feet. Uh, there's chakras everywhere in the body, but there's the seven main ones that feed, uh, they all feed into nerve ganglia, which in turn basically um, send the energy into the organ systems. And so each one of them is related to a physical organ system, but also to emotions, also to, you know, different vibrational frequencies. And so this is going to talk about the throat chakra. So there's so many different ways you could do it. Now, the throat chakra is known as Vishuddha. Uh, the element is space, Akasha. The color is sky blue, and the mantra sound is hum. The fifth chakra, which is the first chakra totally on the spiritual plane, is located in the throat and governs communication and creative verbal expression, such as singing, chanting, reading poetry out loud, and recita recitation. When the fifth chakra is illuminated, all the lower chakras transcend their limitations. The anatomical region of the fifth chakra includes the throat, the neck, the shoulders, thyroid, parathyroid, mouth, tongue, jaw, larynx, and vocal cords. The senses, hearing, and the sense organs are the ears. The Sanskrit word Vishuddha means purity. And I love this translation because it captures the true essence of the throat chakra. Its purity comes from speaking the truth that resides in our hearts. You must speak your truth. People that have thyroid dysfunction are not speaking their truth. And it usually is very easy to figure out where that stems from. A lot of times it stems from relationship issues. Uh, a lot of times it's, it's when you're with a spouse that won't allow you to speak your truth, or a partner, or perhaps a, a, a mother, or a father, or, or it could be teachers, or it could be anything. Um, pure means uncontaminated, clear, innocent, clean, or impeccable. When you reach this level of consciousness, you are exploring the part of you that is pure. The Ayurvedic dosha that rules the fifth chakra is Vata. The two gunas that rule this chakra are Rajas and Sattva. The color we attribute to the throat chakra is a cerulean blue. The mantra or bija seed sound we vocalize for the fifth chakra is hum. Ailments of the fifth chakra include diseases of the throat and the thyroid, parathyroid glands, neck and jaw problems, speech impediments, colds, hearing problems. From a psychological standpoint, imbalances can include unexpressed grief, sadness, anger, judgment, feelings of depression. Fifth chakra energy, the power that lies within the throat chakra is the power to transcend space-time. Communication enables us to transcend space as sound waves travel through the phone lines, cell towers, and internet connections. We can be virtually present in another place through audio 
and more recently through video without leaving our physical location. Communication happens on many levels, not just the physical. We communicate through words and sounds, facial expressions, body language, thoughts, and vibration. The organs and the body parts in the fifth chakra allow us to create and absorb the vibrations of sound. Words have the power to heal when you speak inner truth to yourself. Your inner and outer dialogue about yourself determines how healthy you are. If you repeat to yourself daily, I am so fat and I'll never get thin, those words have the power to become your reality. However, if you tell yourself, I am working on getting healthier each and every day, you will have quite a different outcome. Words from others also have the power to heal. When a child falls and skins his knee, he will heal faster if his parent says, you're all right, get up and go out and play. By, ch <clears throat> by chanting the sound hum repeatedly, you will align the vibrational energy in the fifth chakra and cause your cells to remember their purpose and work towards the greater good, which in this case is keeping you healthy and whole because you know the cells are part of you. They, there's billions of cells in your body and there's, there's also you know billions of life forms in your body that are not you. Yet you can communicate to them and you can help them to help you become more healthy by that communication. So the ultimate healing power in the Vishuddha Chakra enables you to synchronize communication between your inner and outer words, worlds, and most importantly to clear the line of communication to the divine. Once you have harnessed this power, wherein there is no disconnection or disharmony in communication between you, others, and the divine, you will have a clear path towards enlightenment. The first step towards this path is to seek and speak the truth. Recognizing the fifth chakra imbalances, signs that the throat chakra is out of balance may include the vata imbalance of talking incessantly without listening. This kind of nervous talking uses the voice out of fear of silence or fear of being alone. Another manifestation of imbalance would be using the voice to be harsh on others, uh, as such as putting the person in his or her place or being overly critical. Those out of balance can also use their voice as a weapon to hurt another person by not speaking or yelling, screaming or crying out loud to create drama. Speech impediments are disorders that can limit your voice or cause frustration in speaking. A person who feels suppressed and doesn't feel he or she has a voice can experience blockages in the fifth chakra. Miscommunication and misunderstandings are also limitations of the throat chakra, and this often happens when two people are talking at each other instead of to each other, and when one person isn't listening or doesn't understand. So healing the Shuddha. The daily affirmation, I can easily speak my inner truth. Healing the physical body, in order to effectively speak your truth, your throat, your vocal cords, your mouth, your jaw, and your hear hearing must remain healthy. Eating the wrong foods and maintaining poor posture can contribute to ineffective vocal expression. If you find speaking, singing, chanting, or projecting your voice to be challenging, the following changes may aid the throat chakra healing. First, dry mouth can be rectified by reducing caffeine and alcohol consumption and by decreasing the number of dry foods in your diet, such as crackers, chips, dried fruit, and nuts. You can also keep your mouth moist and throat lubricated by swishing and gargling daily with organic food-grade sesame oil. Also, I mean, you can use coconut oil as well. And coconut oil, like basically the toothpaste that I make up, which is coconut oil, baking soda, um, peppermint oil, tea tree oil, and you could put um, either some uh, betonite clay, there's there's other things you could put in there as well, but that's usually what I use, and then you could use that for oil pulling, so you could use that to pull through the teeth as well and just swish it around for a good, you know, a minute or something, it's a really good idea, and uh, it's, it's going to really help keep your gums uh, healthy as well, and it's, it's antibacterial, it's just such a good practice to do. Uh, but going back into the article here, um, take one or two teaspoons in your mouth, swish for a minute, then gargle lightly, spit it out. It will leave a light film in your mouth. You can do this before bed and you will reap the benefits of a lubricated mouth and the antibacterial effects of the sesame seed oil or the coconut oil. Phlegm in your throat can be corrected by reducing dairy, sugar, and processed foods. Chanting and singing. Saying the chakra mantra sounds or other mantras out loud is great for toning 
the, the throat and strengthening the vocal cords. Singing brings about joy and can be transcendent. It's no wonder so many of us sing in the shower or alone in the car. It also brings out a side in us that's often hidden. Liberate your fifth chakra by energy by singing out loud, not only in the shower, shower or the car. And um, obviously I've shared with you how powerful I feel mantras are. And I, I feel they're just so incredibly powerful and mantras and affirmations. We should each make our own affirmation and say it multiple times during the day. It's a given, it's a must. It will help you manifest things so much quicker and it will help you in so many different ways. But also the ancient mantras are extremely powerful. And one of you out there um, reached out to me and he's a local uh, EEA family member and he was talking about the English language and how everything in the English language has been developed as a trap to basically create a negative outcome um, because the English language itself is basically a uh, it's a spell of sorts and there, there is a lot to that and I had seen that before it had been like 20 years since I had uh, gone down that train of thought but it's true and similarly I feel that when we say the Vedic mantras I do feel that the more I've studied the deeper I've gone you know, I, I definitely feel that that's the tradition that's probably the oldest. It, it really is it's hitting me. Uh, it feels like that's the oldest tradition. And so when we say the Sanskrit words, there's power in them. There is power in the Hebrew words as well. And so, you know, there's power in some of these ancient languages because of the vibrational frequency of the words themselves. And uh, as we know, you know, when we look at Hertz, 428, 432, things have been done on purpose to keep us in a lower vibrational frequency and to keep us limited. And so as we discover these things, we rediscover some ancient powerful practices that can transform us. And, but we have in many cases been taught to be fearful of them on purpose by the powers that be so that we won't slip out of their grasp and so that we won't become autonomous you know, and, and in control of our own lives because they don't want that. They want you living in fear. They want you in a lower, smaller mindset where you're totally fearful, you're totally self-dependent. I mean, you're totally dependent on the church, on the politicians, on the government, on the system. And uh, that gives them a greater sense of power. They don't want people waking up. They don't want people discovering the the spark of divinity that lies within every single being on this planet. And so, as we liberate our fifth chakra, let's be mindful of liberating ourselves fully. And you must always speak your truth. There are head and neck exercises you could do that can help this as well. Because again, posture and sitting at a computer, as I am doing now, uh, you know, there's different things you could do uh, as far as head and neck exercises. Yoga asanas and pranayama exercises to heal the fifth chakra as well. So try some of these exercises to help heal and align the Vishuddha chakra. Yeah, Ujjayi breath, which is a breathing technique. Uh, lion's breath, Simhasana, which is another breathing technique. Uh, bridge pose, plow pose. And it gets into it and I'll let you guys read all these descriptions and I'll have the links for you guys as well. Healing the emotional energetic body. For many of us, one of the hardest things to do is to speak the truth. I'm not referring to telling the truth, which at times is challenging in and of itself. I'm talking about speaking your inner truth, the inner truth that resides within your heart. The truth that is the pure essence within your personal soul, the voice that comes from your highest self and gives you authenticity, the authenticity of your own words. It speaks of who you are as an individual and brings light to your uniqueness in every way. And so reflecting on this, let's reflect on that a second. You know, in my point of mind, my conclusion is that we are all divinity exploring the reality that divinity has created from a slightly different point of view. Every one of us is unique. So every one of us has a, a different vibrational frequency. Every one of us has a slightly different reality that we are experiencing. And you know what? 
that is fine. Don't conform. You know, be yourself. Don't conform for anybody. Be true to yourself. If your spouse or your significant other wants you to conform, then they're really not the right person for you. Or perhaps they need to be illuminated to the point where they can understand that they need to just love you and accept you for who you are. And it goes the same for governments. It goes the same for religious institutions. It goes the same for everything. You are a unique expression of divinity. And so be proud of that. And don't conform for anybody. Be true to yourself, whatever that is. Don't allow any others, whether it's the government, whether it's political organization, religious organization, you know, whatever it is, don't allow anything or anyone to make you feel guilty for being yourself because that's not being true to yourself and that will ultimately lend to fifth chakra dis-ease, which then becomes disease. And then we have thyroid issues and then we are, are gaining weight, our hair is falling out, um, we're having problems sleep. Uh, you know, we're having all sorts of things manifest, goiters, uh, throat cancer, you name it. You must be true to yourself. You must speak your truth and live your life living your truth, your unique truth, because you're a unique individual. And so don't be fearful of being yourself. And whatever you feel that you believe, that's fine. But don't allow yourself to be brainwashed by others. Find your own truth. Delve deep. Don't live in fear. So during the day, focus on your words and see if they match how that you truly feel. Resist the temptation to judge or admonish yourself. Don't judge anybody. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge others. Just notice, you may be amazed to discover times when you don't think you're stretching the truth, but you are. Keep in mind, I'm not talking about joking around or exaggerating to prove a point, but rather deliberately changing the truth to mislead another person or yourself in a way, or better yet, are you saying something because somebody wants to hear what you're saying and you're not saying what you truly feel? Make sure that you don't do that because that will ultimately reflect back on you and cause disease in you. For example, if you get on the scale and weigh yourself and you weigh 160 pounds but you tell your spouse who asks if the scale read 150, that's deliberate. You might think, well, what's the harm in that? It's just a number on the scale. That might be so, but if it weren't a big deal, why would you change the number? So ultimately, speaking the truth and being mindful of your inner truth is about flexing a muscle so you can live a life of excellence, marked by coherence between body, mind, and spirit. The more you flex your muscles of deception, the bigger they get. And the more you flex your truthfulness muscles associated with Ashura, the bigger those get. In the end, you will have greater gains when your truthfulness muscles are flexed and toned. Living in and speaking the truth doesn't always have to tell all. This is your absolute right to say such things as, I'd rather not say, I'm not sure right now, or even, now is not the right time for me to express this. And those are great points. You know, you, we don't have to answer all questions. We don't have to, especially if it's something that's not going to have a positive outcome and you just don't want to go there, then just simply say, I just don't want to go there at this time. Um, I don't want to bring up anything that might become a negative emotion, a negative feeling, or might lead to uh, an argument or any sort of thing along those lines. So this is all great, great, great ideas. And it gets into some other uh, ideas as well. And of course, I'll have the links for you guys. But be proud of yourself. Be proud of who you are. And do not be fearful of speaking your truth, whatever it is. This is part of the energy of the new era that we are going into. This is an era where we're, we're not going to live somebody else's life. We're not going to accept the life that is being forced on us. We are going to live the life that we want to live, each one of us in our own unique way. And you know what? We're going to be proud of that. And people are going to love us for who we are and not who they want us to be. And if somebody tries to conform you to their mold, then they're not the right person to be with. And they have a lot of learning to do. Not you, but they have a lot of learning to do. Anybody that tries to conform another to their will is imposing their will on somebody. And, and that's not something that we're going to do moving forward. That's not unity consciousness. That's not a positive way of living. And, and that is actually an act of war in so many ways. 
It really is. Think about it. When you are trying to force your will on somebody, when you are trying to force your reality on somebody, when you are trying to tell somebody they're going to face pain and suffering, if they don't conform to your will, your mindset, your worldview, that's nothing less than an act of war. And we should not be at war with each other, we should be supporting each other. So, again, embrace the differences, embrace the uniqueness. You know, I so love embracing new cultures and getting totally immersed in new cultures. I love, you know, trying different foods from around the world and seeing how people live in different parts of the world and the uniqueness of all the cultures. So we need to embrace that and accept that and not try to make everything one size fits all. So let's embrace our differences and, and let's agree to disagree on so many things and let's just simply love each other and support each other as we do it. So my friends, as always, please do thumbs up to support the channel. Please do grow with us, join our family, click the bell, get all the notices, double check your subscriptions as YouTube uh, keeps having issues with that and people getting un unsubscribed. I've gotten several dozen of you telling me that recently, just yesterday. Um, and share this with as many people as possible so that we could wake as many people up as possible. May you guys be blessed with abundant peace, love, happiness, and all good things always and always be safe in these times. Namaste and God bless my friends.